Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our scripture readings are taken from Acts 10, 34, as well as verses 42 through 48, and the Gospel of John 3, verses 16 through 21. This are, these are the readings for Pentecost Monday. Uh, these are very rich readings, kind of the core of the gospel. John 3.16, God so loved the world, right, that he sent his only son. Uh, Jesus tells us, this son that was sent, uh, true God and true man, Jesus tells the apostles, but also us through the gospel, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. He is not just another way or a way. He is not just another truth, as if truth is relative, but he is the way, the only way, the truth, the only truth, and the life, the only life. Um, sometimes people will say, well, I follow truth. Isn't that enough? Well, no, that is not enough. There is actually a way to walk. There is a path to walk, and there is a life. That life is sanctifying grace. So just accepting the truth is not enough. Um, that truth is will lead you to a path, a way, a way of life, a discipline, um, rules, precepts, right? A, a, a follow, a way to follow. And then it's not just enough to just walk the walk and, 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 and you have to have that very life of God in us, the very grace, the very divine life in us. And so truth, way, and life, all are necessary. And accepting the whole Christ and to accept the whole Christ means to accept the way, the truth, and the life. So let's talk a little bit about this. Jesus says, He that doth truth cometh to the light. So when we do truth, when we, you know, it's in society when people realize there is a right and there is a wrong, there is falsehood and there is truth. This is what's so devastating in our society is the relativism. The relativism that says there is no such thing as absolute truth. Or even going so far as to say there is no truth or falsehood. It just depends, right? And there is no right and there is no wrong. It just depends. So relativism is devastating. It's a disease in our society. And so we need to say, no, there is such thing as an objective truth and there is such thing as an objective right and wrong. Truth, falsehood, right and wrong. So there does need to be a movement in our conscience. Every human is obligated to move from falsehood to truth from wrongdoing to right, from evil to good, from falsehood to truth. And so how does that movement work? Well, first, if you realize something is false, then you say, well, what is true? And you move from the false to the truth. If you realize there is a partial truth, then you would move from the partial truth to the fullness of truth. And this is natural to say that this is the obligation of man. I don't know if it's necessarily natural. I think it is built in us to want the truth. And once we find out that there is truth, to move in that direction. That is the obligation. So this is why Jesus says, He that doth the truth. If you, if you find out the truth, if you do the truth, then you come to the light. So how does that work with, with this truth, way, and life? I think that there is definitely a process here. Now, Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life, and it's the, it's the responsibility of the church who he founded. Remember, Jesus died, rose. He, he walked with the disciples, uh, of course, and, and many people met him and were taught by him for 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the Father, right? And we say that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. That's the second coming. But what did he leave with us? He said, I will not abandon you. He left a church, and the church's job is to continue that mission teaching the truth, governing according to the way, that's discipline, discipleship, and sanctifying, making people holy with the divine life, which is grace and the sacraments. And so we have the church that continues the mission of Jesus Christ, the truth, the way, the life. So how does this work for us? Well, normally since man desires truth and goodness, then we have to say, okay, well, let's say that someone comes to a knowledge of the truth. Hopefully, then they will profess, they will believe that truth, and they will believe that truth with all their heart. And so when you come to a knowledge of the truth and you say, I believe that truth, then what would you do? You would profess it. You would profess it, and you would say, I would be willing to die for this. I will profess this, and I will begin to then live out what I profess. So you come to a knowledge of the truth, and then you profess it. 
preferably you would profess it not just to your friends and people close to you, but you would be willing to profess that to others, even strangers, even to those that would persecute you. And then you say, I will live what I profess. If I profess this truth, then I will follow it up with actions. But how am I going to do that? How am I going to live out what I profess? We need something more than just because we, we, we lack courage. We need God's very help. We need His very life. We need His grace. And so we profess the faith. We live out what we profess through the moral life. And then we need grace to continue to profess the faith and live the moral life. Um, and this is what the church offers us. It, it teaches us truth. It provides the way, shows us the way, guides us in the way, and it gives us every tool necessary, particularly the Mass and the sacraments, God's very grace, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the virtues, all these graces, all these tools to continue to profess and to live the faith. Um, and so we see that this pattern happens all the time. Someone comes to a belief, and then they say, well, I believe this truth now, what should I do? And the answer is to repent, to change to move in a direction, to go from falsehood to truth, not just with your words, but with your actions, to go from a partial truth to the fullness of the truth, not just with your words, but with your actions, a repentance, a movement, and then to be baptized, baptized so that you can have the grace necessary to continue staying connected with Christ. Now, we believe that through baptism, we are bond with Christ. It's an indissoluble bond, um, broken only by mortal sin. Um, but this bond should stay indissoluble, right? We should stay connected. We believe that through confirmation, that bond is strengthened. We believe through the Eucharist, that bond is nourished. Uh, we believe that if any time that bond is broken through reconciliation, it can be reconciled. And so we see here that, yes, we believe, we come to a knowledge of something, but then we must do that by repenting and aligning our life with our new knowledge, our truth, the truth, and then receiving baptism, confirmation, communion, confession, matrimony, holy orders, all these great gifts so that we can continue to live out what we profess. Um, so this is the truth and this is the life. He that does the truth comes to the light. Um, the light has been given to us. Jesus Christ is the light. He is the light for the nations. Lumen gentium. He is the light for all nations. He is the light for all people. So we need to pray that we will always cherish the truth, look for the truth, and desire the truth, and never, ever give up the truth, even if we are saying, I would die for this truth. That's what we need to get to. And, and the, thing, the only thing that left is, is the ultimate act of charity, which would be martyrdom, to die for the truth, to give our life for Jesus Christ the truth because he was willing to give his life for us. Thank you for joining me for this Lexu on the Go. Please take the time to visit linktoliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. Also, we have an online school. Please check that out on uh, at linktoliturgy.teachable.com. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel. Lots of great things. Share those things. Search our, our website. Lots of great resources to learn the faith and to practice it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.